The wing market began with fabric core foamed handles and a couple with booms and EVA. But what seems to be settling nicely into the design progression of a wing are rigid handles, keeping you more connected to the wing without taking on all the weight of a full length boom. In this episode, we compare two premium hand wings, the Takuma RS 5.1 meters in size, which is designed and named after legendary cell designer Robert Stroh, and the Duotone unit V2 5 meters in size, the work of highly accomplished innovator Ken Winter. So let's go check these wings out on inland lake riding with a few OK wingers giving their feedback on the two wings. I was excited to see the release from Takuma of a premium hand wing. After all, I haven't been shy about my feelings on the Takuma Kujira hydrofoils for winging over the last couple of years. Kujira! And I was just waiting for them to bring their wing production to that same level. The RS wing, well, it utilizes not only trailing edge battens, but also removable power tip battens in the trailing edge of the main frame. And they also have added an X-ply laminate on the back panels to resist deformation, which is a common occurrence with prolonged wing use. The carbon handles, they are the most unique that I have used as the front handles give a separation from the center strut with the J shape. And all these reinforcements, they obviously will lend a little more to the weight on the RS, but it's not a substantial difference from the unit V2. This 5.1 meter gets inflated to 8 PSI and a specific valve adapter, not unlike Duotone, is required for this wing. So don't lose that or you just have an uncomfortable blanket to you. The question remains, why can't we just have standardized valves? Deflation is simple with the dual valve setup, just push in the tab and air will release. When you pick up the RS, it has a different feel as the windsurf origins of the wing are very noticeable. The quality construction of the RS is undeniable. A comfortable leash comes with the wing and there is also a bag, which I would say is really the only thing low quality about this entire setup. The Duotone Unit V2, which follows up on the V1, which was the most popular wing at our local spot the last couple of years, has not disappointed in its transition from EVA handles to the rigid 26 centimeter handles that you currently see. The five meter can take up to 7.5 PSI and it immediately feels super rigid in flight. I think this stiffness can be attributed to the segmented front tube structure of the unit and a couple of small battens, and tight canopy tension. The unit also has windows for increased safety. The V2 is a single pump system with a connector hose to the center strut, which can be closed off to allow inflation in one of the compartments if damage happens to occur out on the water. Also, there are a couple of deflation valves to expedite the packup process. This review looks at the standard unit with Dacron construction, but there's also a D-Lab wing out there with the Lula construction which also can be available at an added cost. You will just have to weigh whether or not it makes financial sense to make that jump. And I can see it possibly being justified, especially in the larger sizes when you wanna get up and ride in the lightest of conditions. Immediately what you see when walking to the water is the stability of the RS. It doesn't flap all over the place like most wings. The nose of the RS pushes down rather than rising when holding the nose handle. This attribute may be a positive or a negative depending on your riding preferences. On the water start, the RS has a significant amount of power. You don't feel that added weight of the wing. And even in light wind conditions, a little puff, well, it does a nice job of de-weighting the wing in your hands. And once upon foil, the wing locks in. I mean, it really locks in. And I know the most overused word in the industry right now is intuitive, so I won't use it. It just seems to, well, fly itself. The RS drives well upwind, and some of this is undeniable to handle positioning and shape. And these handles are probably the most comfortable that I have used. I can see wind lovers with windsurfing backgrounds really taking to this wing, as its designer definitely carried his experience in that industry to this wing's construction. 
On the jibe, the wing is so rigid, it just performs a solid pivot over a central axis. And there's just simply no fluttering with this wing. On the tack, well, I can perform it, but it's not as easy for myself to break that wing to the other side. And sometimes it requires me to fully break it over after coming to the other side of the tack. It's hard to test luffing the wing on inland lakes in low to mid wind conditions, but it does seem to be very stable in this maneuver as the nose does push down when holding the lead handle. You can also imagine though that the wing may be more difficult to get under on a water start, especially on a low volume board due to this attribute of the RS. Jumping will be addressed later with Daniel because if my foil leaves the water well, then something has gone terribly wrong. So who do I think the RS is for? I would say riders who want to be locked in with a wing that just isn't busy. The RS is for riders who want speed, who maybe have a background in windsurfing, who enjoy jumping, and for riders who want a good amount of rigidity and grunt out of a wing. Now on to the unit second edition. This wing may be even more rigid than the RS. It has more grunt than its first edition. Handle placement and comfort on this wing is also very comfortable and it is perfectly placed. The unit is a busier wing than the RS, which can also be a negative or a positive. For me, it allows tacks to be performed more easily as it doesn't mind moving freely across the window and it provides great upwind angles with great speed and power. And when attempting new maneuvers, I would probably opt for this wing just simply due to its increased playfulness. I would say that this playfulness of the wing does quieten down in nose handling as long as there is substantial enough wind through the wing. The unit being so rigid with so much grunt can possibly hit its ceiling earlier than other wings and this was not the day to test the upper limits as riding conditions on this 5 meter were 12 to 20 miles per hour. But this could be an issue depending on your riding experience and your efficiency in dumping gusts in overpowered conditions. The unit, in my opinion, is for the all-around rider who doesn't mind the increased movement that the wing presents. I don't think that this means that you have to be an intermediate rider or above to enjoy it, but rather a rider who likes to fly their wing more. It doesn't lock in like the RS, but that more than anything falls under preferences. And due to all the preference-driven decisions in the wing market, let's look at what some other okay wingers have to say about these two wings on a demo day on Lake Hefner in Oklahoma. Went out and tested the Takuma. Thought it was pretty nice, it had nice grunt. It was easy to get up on foil. I like the curve and the handle. Kind of nice when you're changing. I like the way you can lean back against it when you're driving into the wind. It locks in real solid real stable. I like the way it jumps, it has a nice jump and hang time to it. The um, carving is nice, you can drive into the wind really hard carving it because it sets off. The thing I didn't care for was when riding the wave from on the nose handle, it's kind of nose heavy but I think it's because it's backwinding, pushing the nose down, makes it feel heavy. And uh, the wingtip starts to catch, it's real hard to get it back up, you kind of got to push it with your hand because of uh, the pressure on the back side. Who is it for and who is it not for? I don't think it would be very beginner friendly. Wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. An experienced person, I think would be fine with it. Somebody who likes to do the back winding tricks where they get the wing behind them and it's pushing and all that would be great. I think also it would be fast. I'm not a very fast guy, but I can tell that it stays locked in. The draft doesn't move around in the wing. And most wings I ride, it does. And it's hard to kind of find the sweet spot. That one, I just leaned back against it, just like a sail in windsurfing, and it just locked in and uh, just cruised really well. So I think uh, somebody going fast would probably like it. So what do I like about the unit? I like the handles really well. I like to be able to subtly move, especially when it comes to jumping. I like to scoot my backhand all the way back. I like the stiffness, it jumps really well. I like the way that it um, transitions, moves back and forth really well, drives up wind. Um, the draft's not quite as locked in as well as the Takuma one, but it's locked in much better than last year's. The um, durability, I like the way that they've uh, built it stronger this year. It looks very durable. 
and the seams are much better. What do I not like? What I don't like is carrying it. It's very busy. It moves around, which is fine when I'm riding waves, it stays down there when it has wind going across it and you're in motion. But when you're just trying to walk out from the shore, it's very busy. Uh, what I liked about the unit, I love the handles. It gives a very solid feeling. Uh, I'm used to uh, just regular loops. I feel like you can manipulate the wing a little bit better with this, especially whenever the wind gets light, you need to move into position. Um, I felt like the whole wing was very stable, solid. It was very well made and it also made really good power while flying. I had good wind when I was out there, but every once in a while there would be a, a small hole and just a couple of pumps and uh, kept the speed up really well. I really like the handles. One thing I liked about the handles is the waves we have on the lake are very short and I'm a beginner at riding them. So the transition from flagged out to powered um, with the Takuma is much quicker and easier with by holding the front of that J handle. Um, the other unusual thing about the Takuma is when you're walking across a parking lot flagged out, it feels like it's pushing down instead of raising up. And it feels odd at first, but it makes it very stable. It doesn't flap from one side to the other like a lot of wings will. Uh, I like the solid construction. It feels like it's very well made. Uh, it's very tight, uh, no flopping. It does feel very powerful for a five meter. Uh, the, the handling is very neutral. It goes where you want and it's not hunting for wind somewhere else. I will say that the Takuma is my new favorite wing. Uh, the unit was very nice, but the Takuma is my favorite, uh, and they both show me that I need to go wing shopping. Okay, I just got done using the Takuma RS. I gave it a battle scar. <laughs>
And I did think it was easier to use that front handle to spin the wing around. So I, from that perspective, I really liked that wing and I, and I like how light it is and I like that it is stable. And I and think it, in the initial comparison, I probably would go with the, the unit um, overall, but I think if I could get more time with the Tacoma RS and got adjusted to the shape of that handle and the way the nose wants to press down, I, I think I might ultimately end up liking it better, but it just flies quite a bit differently when you're, when you're tacking than I'm used to. And so it, I think there's an initial learning curve with it. Thanks for all the feedback from the Hefner crew, minus Theo's shish kebab exercise on the RS wing. There's really no winner or loser in this video. As you can see, you can't go wrong with either of these wings. If you have an interest in the Takuma RS or the Duotone Unit V2, well then just follow your personal riding preferences and then give a shout to Green Hat Kiteboarding for purchase of either of these wings or other wind sports gear. Also, subscribe if you get a chance, and I'd appreciate any comments on these wings. That's all for now, and we'll see you next time on the OK Kite. Okay